What's up, everybody? My name is Harrison, and today we are looking at the top six blunders in the FIDE Grand Prix Leg 2 so far in the 2022 FIDE Grand Prix. One of the most humbling things in the world about chess is that even the best in the world can blunder sometimes, and so that's what we're going to be taking a look at here today. And I will say, as of the recording of this video, we have only seen the end of the first round of the knockout stage. So there are a few rounds in the second leg that are yet to be played. But let's take a look at some of the top blunders so far. And by the end of this video, we're going to see the worst blunder in the second leg of the FIDE Grand Prix so far. Number six on our list is between Anish Giri and Nikita Vishagov. Anish playing the white pieces has just played queen takes g5 in a very dynamic and sharp position here. White has a lot of attacking plans here, but Black's move does not address any of them. Vishagov went c5, which gives Giri the advantage after queen to g6. And now it is very difficult to stop all of White's attacking plans. White can get the rook to f3 to h3, rook coming down here to h8, and also the rook coming to h7 and deflecting the queen from the defense of the rook on g7. A lot of different attacking ideas, and unfortunately there's not really a lot that Black can do. Vishagov tried bishop to d8, but it was all over. Anish Giri played rook to h7, and Vishagov resigned in this position. Much better would have been knight to c4, and then after queen to g6, now Vishagov can play knight to d6, so after rook h7, there is no overworked piece tactic anymore. And this would have kept Vishagov in the game. Number five on our list comes from a gameplay today between Richard Rapport and Maxime Vashirlegrov in the semifinals. Report just played f3 and has a very nice threat of wanting to come in with the rook to c7 and start getting active with his rooks. Here, Vashir Lagrov needs to play rook c8, which is a really hard move for him to play because just two moves earlier, he played rook a to e8. So it's hard to admit that you're wrong, but instead MVL played f5, which is a huge blunder because after this very long and forcing sequence of moves, it actually allows white to get two connected Past pawns. The sequence is very long, but it's also very forcing. Looks a little something like this. Rook to c7 first attacking the bishop. Bishop must move. And now a4 kicking the bishop off of this diagonal. Bishop d3. Now we can go d6 check. King h8 d7. Rook is kicked to b8. Now bishop b4. The other rook must move. But if the rook moves to d8, then simply bishop e7 will pick up some more material. So MVL tries bishop to e5 instead, but after bishop takes f8, bishop takes c7, bishop e7, there's now a checkmate threat, so black must stop this with king g7, and now e5 finally gives white those two connected pass pawns, and these two connected pass pawns are just going to be too strong for black to defend against, and Richard Rapport went on to win this game. Coming in at number four on our list is also a game from today with Anish Giri and Dmitry Andraken. Giri has been building an advantage and has a big advantage after Andraken has played h6. And here Giri should simply continue with knight to h3. Black is going to have to save their knight. White can pick up a pawn, will be up a pawn. And then black may play knight to b8 to try to activate the queen and the rook, but simply bishop b3. And white's long-term plan here is going to be to attack on the king side. And it's going to be very hard for Black to remaneuver their pieces to the king side with this sort of blockade happening in the center. So White's going to have a pretty nice attack here and definitely has the advantage. But instead of simply playing knight back to h3, Geary surprised everyone and played knight takes f7, which completely allows Black to equalize after king takes f7, b takes a5, and White has traded one of their best pieces for one of Black's worst pieces. And white has totally messed up their pawns. So black is once again equal. Geary and Dimitri would go on to draw this game, even though Geary had that big advantage. Coming in at number three on our list is Hari Krishna versus Nikita Vishnagov. This time, Vishnagov is not the one who is blundering, but his opponent blundered. Here, Hari Krishna played the egregious blunder of knight takes d5, which can be exploited in only a couple moves. Hari Krishna was obviously expecting his opponent to recapture right away, but Vishnagov can throw in this intermezzo, knight e4, forking the queen and the f2 spot. Hari Krishna would lose this game in only around 15 more moves. Queen b3, bishop takes f2 check, king to f1, e takes d5 and black already has a sizable advantage here. The game actually only lasted 10 more moves before Hari Krishna resigned. Definitely a huge blunder, but we've got two even bigger blunders, if you can believe it. It just goes to show that even some of the best in the world can make 
Really big mistakes sometimes. Coming in at number two on our list, we have Alexander Predke versus Mamajirov. Here, Alexander starts with Rook to E1, which comes with a pretty big threat, which Mamajirov actually missed. He played Rook to F8, and this actually just loses a piece after F4. A simple attack on the queen deflecting from the bishop. The queen only has two spots to go to. Queen c5 runs into rook c1 and you're going to have to leave the bishop. And queen to e4 runs into the discovered attack, bishop f2, and black is going to once again lose the bishop again. So black just losing a piece here after f4. The simple decoy tactic. But Alexander actually missed this and blundered back. He played queen c2, the rare double blunder. Under. Both players missed this decoy tactic and they would go on to draw this game. And last but not least, what is the biggest blunder in the FIDE Grand Prix so far? There, there's been 50 games in the second leg of the FIDE Grand Prix so far. What has been the biggest blunder? And this was my number one on the list. It's not just one blunder. It's not just two blunders, but it is the triple blunder three blunders in a row dimitri andraken versus Etin bakro and this is in the last round of the group stage if andraken wins he will move on to the knockouts and if bakro wins he will play sam shanklin in a playoff game so both of these players will need a win in the position on board bakro is actually winning he has a huge advantage but the move is really difficult to find he's got to start with king to f5 hitting the bishop and escaping from this rook g7 check but that's a really hard move to play especially when there's this free knight on a5 so the first blunder, this rook takes a5 blunder, it actually severely diminishes black's advantage. But, you know, king f5, a very hard move to find, so we'll give him a pass for that. Andraken continued with g4, now taking away this f5 square so the king can no longer come to f5. And Bakro plays a baffling move, which is knight to d7. I really don't understand this move. It seems like it's just giving up a free knight. I really still don't understand this move. And after rook takes d7, black has completely given up their advantage. Stockfish gives this position as equal and black actually has to find the only move which is f5 the backwards defense of the queen to the g7 pawn they should have actually played it a move earlier instead of sacrificing their knight but instead bakro comes in with the triple blunder queen b1 and white is actually completely winning because now there is no way to stop rook takes g7 simply king g2 queen e4 check king g3 rook a3 King h4 and Bakro playing the black pieces resigned in this position because there's no way to stop rook takes g7. So to go from completely winning to resigning in only five moves to knock yourself completely out of the tournament, that's personally got to be my top blunder of the FIDE Grand Prix second leg so far. But who knows, we might see even bigger blunders happening in the knockout stage. We'll just have to wait and find out.